So we're just playing Wurzel for the last time this season. He's going to have a rest now in his Avery. And Zeus is up and he's going to be my eagle for the winter for the falconry. So he has just flown. It's really windy today. We've run an eagle and vulture today and he has just flown brilliantly. What a result for the last time I'm going to fly him for a couple of months. He was exceedingly good. High soaring in the wind. Just what I wanted today because the last time I flew him before I went away, hot and still and he was useless. He likes to work when it's windy. Do you mind? Hold on. So this guy here, you're not going to see him in the air now for a good few weeks. He's going to have his rest period, bless him. Wurzel, the bald eagle. So it's been a funny week so far. Yesterday was mostly office work. And then in here, this is our little office. That's the little sort of, you know, put your books on and do your paperwork on. But <laughs> a little bit of a snug. But all my books since we moved house 18 months ago, they have been just piled up here, there and everywhere in boxes. It's been getting on Jackie's wig. And I've been looking for sort of book cabinets to put them in. But in the end, I've just gone for basic shelving. It's, it's just so nice to get them all on show. Or not so much on show, because I suppose they look scruffy really, but just somewhere in one place where I can actually see my books again and have a look at them. I do love some of my books. So some of these things, I'll just show you a couple. This one here, groundbreaking book in its day. And then the later version came out. And then this one came out. And then they brought out one just for catfish. And then someone else brought one out for reptiles and amphibians. But the original one, it was called an atlas because it was grouping the fish by actual where they live rather than sort of species groups and family groups which was sort of quite novel and on they went so it's some big old books there and then have a look up here some of these books are amazing so anything by martin holland said i love i love his sort of writing skills and his books are fascinating and then my favorite author for country writing has to be bb absolutely brilliant books and then on it goes really We've got all kinds of wildlife books. And this is a whole lifetime. Some of these books, I mean, this one here, for instance. You know, I was a little kid at primary school when I brought that book. And stuff that I study and things I'm interested in, sometimes the odd biography and things like that. And things I don't get time to do much at the moment, like fishing. Pike fishing was my big thing at one time. Um, there's a few doubled up books here, like these ones. So some of these are really good books. There's one or two in there. I'm not actually going to... I'm not actually going to point to where they are. that are absolutely rubbish, but I kind of kept them for posterity. I'm not going to point them out. Not fair on the author. And some great, I, think I don't shoot personally, but some great country books that I've been given over the years. Some amazing stuff. I think this book here, if you ever get a chance to read this book and you like nostalgia, photography of wildlife, falconry, eagles, birds, this... <coughs> how tough it was for people and how they got stuff done in the olden days. Something I'm really keen to get more interested in is that one. So just sort of a lifetime's worth of books, obviously the David Attenborough sort of collection there. But it's so nice, not just sort of to see them, because I don't say, I don't know if they look anything but scruffy books, but just about to pick stuff up off the shelf and, you know, have a look at some of these amazing stuff. Certainly some great full curry titles there. Anyway. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. I brought these little Lithops stone plants. There's tiny little specks. I mean, they're still tiny, look. But they were like tiny little peas, like, like this one here, I guess. Look at them, they're really growing now. Take a bit of fancy care, more than you'd think. All about not overwatering them. But fascinating little things, nonetheless. I love the weird and wonderful plants, like I love the weird and wonderful sort of animals really. And a couple more <laughs> lurking. So interesting read. Haven't read this one yet. This one here, an older version of this book, an older copy, was without a doubt my falconry bible as a teenager onwards. No internet, no mobile phones, remember? This book, whilst a book that I now train birds in a very different way from this book. This book is, I think, the best book ever written when it comes to a how to practice the art of full It's an art, so it's incredibly difficult to have a one size fits all instruction. But this book, I don't think anyone has come close 
to the level of detail step by step if this goes wrong try this that kind of you know how how do you how do you write down an instruction manual to Fulkery? that book is the one for sure outdated by my standards and what i do now but brilliant work brilliant work have a look at this beauty it's gone look at that of all of nature's beauty surely the grey banded king snake is right up there fancy seeing that in a while looking like that so I'm hoping to get out with Zeus the Golden Eagle for the first time this year tomorrow goodness me it's been rough this afternoon it's forecast to be really windy tomorrow morning and then lovely and wet all afternoon so that might not happen so have a look at this bird flu in the UK over the last few years has become a real winter problem probably more so for you farm birds because it's your whole livelihood and you keep birds in high concentrations excuse the wind noise for us generally birds of prey are kept individually on the most part and in a, in a very different way but it's still always there threatening unfortunately this summer just gone it's been the first time really where the scare's been there and there's been cases picked up in the summer it's normally a bit like half flus and germs really spread out much much worse autumn and winter bird flu tends to be a winter time disease that's really that builds up in the winter and comes to us with all the winter migratory birds whether it's waterfowl or whatever coming to our shores but it's been present it's been present all summer so one thing to mitigate that is a free loft in the birds because there are times where the government say we shouldn't be putting them out so if we put our birds out to weather uh, on here in the bath they're open to the elements more you know maybe they're sitting there and i don't know you know a, a sparrow with bird food poos on there or into there on that same day even though it's clean fresh and disinfected every mor morning there's a problem equally open top aviaries with trees above could obviously the same thing could happen it's impossible to mitigate unless you put your birds individually in sealed compartments and our birds fly we want them to fly but the birds that are free lofted we've changed a few things around here so sky she's actually molting now she's on a rest period so simple design there's no point cluttering an aviary up there's nowhere they can move then but simple design sheltered perch at the back perch at the front because this is always a problem keeping birds of prey in mesh much better barred windows that's all for another video the reasons why but falconers understand that amongst the falconers among you but a perch close to the front will often stop them hanging on the wire there and they'll sit there and then once we find out a favorite point on that branch that'll be wrapped that area with astroturf which is even better for their feet to prevent bumblefoot but for now as often is the case she's got a sort of a block shaped perch there made of a log and she's really enjoying that and she's got a food chute there where we can poke food through without disturbing her food through there onto a food shelf that's easily cleaned over there so she's not coming at the door all the time to get us and get angsty for the food or give me the food it drops through a chute Again, the falconers among you understand that all of that kind of thing. The non-falconers among you, especially those that say, oh, those poor birds, they sit tethered on these perches and they can't fly and they want to fly all day. Birds of prey, once their needs are met for the day, the biggest one of this is their food, they're fed. They don't want to fly. Got no interest in flying. And me and Emily were just speaking earlier that we've got the lugger falcon over there and we've got Sky the land across there and they were fed this morning, day off today, downtime, resting, rest period, and both of these birds have almost not moved from their perches at all because they don't need to. They're sitting on the perches that they're favoring at the moment. Birds of prey, incredibly boring when you're not flying them. They have no interest in moving whatsoever. That wastes calories. Why waste calories when you're a predator? You never know when you're gonna eat again. So they can chill out in there. We've had a bit of a change around. We get as much stuff in Avery's free lofted this year and this winter than ever before, including, dare I say, the one bird I said I will never free loft again. 
I'll show you him. So we've got spots moved around over here. And when you're free lofting these birds, it's all about keeping them feather perfect and not having them flying into the mesh to come and be with you because obviously that's what they want to do because that's their, their life is to fly to us and fly around and come back. So little things like just that perch on the door there, just getting them, setting those free lofts up to keep those birds really happy and chilled out. Not so easy with idiot bird over here. The bird I said, I would not free loft ever again. Oh, he's coughed a pellet up in his bath. So I don't know if you can see him. I'm gonna flip the camera around, hold on. So what I've had to do to modify, last time this bird was free lofted, when he came out, I couldn't tell because of his dark colored feathers until he came out, he'd squared off all of his primary feathers, catching them on things. So we've got a plastic sheet across here. So all the uprights of the, the wood that the cladding goes onto, the, I can't even speak again. What is it called, the framework? isn't gonna catch his wingtips as he flies along there. And then in the back there, there's Wurzel. There he is, on his perch, high up at the back, chilling out and relaxing. So, three winters ago, he was free lofted on his rest period in here, and he came out in a bit of a state on his wingtips. We're gonna try again with all these smooth off sides. Hopefully, he can just rest and chill out but he's such a stupid bird in so much as his, his kind of neophobia or whatever you want to call it. Even today, the gardeners came in and mowed the paddock. They drove past in their little ride on mower, literally drove past, not even close to his Avery. And he had a full on idiot spell flying into the front mess, which is obviously what we don't want him to do. So again, you've got a perch here at the front for him to sit on very close to stop these birds. It's all about stopping them hitting the mesh. I can make this a seclusion Avery and cover this and he can just chill out all winter, but then he'll be even more agoraphobic, bless him, when he comes back out. So he looks magnificent, but let's see how he gets on in there over this winter. I think my lens on my camera needs a bit of a clean, but it is getting dark. Bless him, there he is. So free lofting, lots of stuff. By the end of the winter, there probably will be a free loft for every single bird here at Icarus Fulcry. Big changes to how birds were kept here, mostly tethered in the past. Does it mean free lofting is better than tethering? No, it doesn't. Some of it will mitigate potential contact with bird flu. But from the point of the birds exercise, moving around, they'll do no more. As you can see exactly now with these birds, they'll do no more in there than they would tethered. They'll just sit there chilling out. It's what they do. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. One good thing about today's windy weather, Emily flew Horizon here for our experience day guest today and he was stupendous. He flies, soars really high and stoops vertically to the guest gloves, but he'll only do that when the wind is blowing. So good day for flying the Chilean blue eagle buzzard. Something happened out of my knowledge and control, which when you know what it is, would seem hard to believe, but it is so. <laughs> Comment below <laughs> if you've noticed. <laughs> so the smooth snakes are, they're sort of setting down, I guess, a bit for winter. The weather's cool. They still got some mild bit of background heat on during the day, but the nighttime temperatures are slowly dropping now. I think, well, one of them's feeding and looking at the girth of her, the female is feeding still. I think the male's gone off his food, which is okay if the weather chills and he sort of starts to hibernate slash brumate through the winter. But I wouldn't want him to sort of be too active for too long, not eating before brumation. So we'll keep an eye on him. He's certainly a lot slimmer than her. I'd rather they were both still eating. Uh, it just feels you a bit more confidence. It'll be a long winter when it comes, I'm sure. Those little blighters. And he's been in today and you know, giving everything a deep clean as she does on a Wednesday, really sort of spoils the, the mammal section. Look at them. That little blighter there. She is brilliant with Emily, like squishy pet soft, but with me, she still thinks I'm on the menu for sure. <laughs> European polecats, brilliant. What great fun and lovely animals they are, unless they bite you. Yes, you, it's you I'm talking about.
it's probably about time Roxy's diaries had an update. So we'll get on that soon. I tend to wait for Jackie or Annie to send me some funny footage of her. So we'll get a bit more of that, but there she is chilling out. She's always really tired in the afternoons when Annie's been here because Annie spends so much time playing with her and occupying her mind with mind games, if you like, stuff to think about and puzzles and just all round exercise. It literally, she's like a little toddler and she gets really, <laughs> really tired and sleepy afterwards. But had her fun for the day for sure. Look at that, what a beautiful animal. Totally tame fox. Certainly for me, watching her move and do her stuff, it's really increased my knowledge of the red fox and how they can move and behave for sure. Good night. So in here now, the great crested newts have gone on to their land phase. They'll spend the winter months on land with their their sort of youngsters from the last couple of years. What else is going on? The red claw crayfish kind of snoozing as the water's colder, but they'll feed all through the winter. And the toads, they're still got a little bit of heat, a little bit of light and still feeding well at the moment. Oh, we did get a new sign for, obviously we've got our info signs, but when Jack and I were in Kent, we saw this sign, we just thought, ah, oh, that's gonna go in Norma's, Norma's little run next year. But she's not in here now. She's not, oh, that's not Norma. She's not in here. She's now being kept warm in, in one of the barns, a little bit of heat, so she doesn't hibernate. And again, that isn't her. And she feeds and stays awake all winter, which is, safer and better for her for sure the camera lens was mucky look at that a bit clearer so here he's sitting at the front here something interesting to have a look at i don't know if you can see there but you can see he's got a tail feather there from probably the year before last that hasn't molted yet and if you look behind his chest it's much longer it's an inch longer than his current fresh white feathers of this year that's typical for birds of prey. Their tail feathers and their primary wing feathers and such, they actually get smaller as the bird gets older. They start with longer feathers to give them sort of stabilizers and a bit more buoyancy. But as their skills increase over the years, those feathers get smaller and it gives them a, a faster, a faster wing loading for sure. But really noticeable how much longer that is. It really is. But where's all the bald eagle actually chilling out now and watching the world go by, thinking, rather than just reacting. Something he can do equally well if he puts his mind to it. Getting old now, the old boy. Just moved my mower. He's one of my favourite creatures of the gardens now. Old Toady. Now uh, I'm going to find somewhere. <laughs> oh no, he knows where he's going now. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. He knew that guy was there. <laughs> Love a toad. So it's howling wind out there. I've just been out with Kyle and Zara. Uh, a bit of falcon in the field. Uh, first time for me this year. And very good she was too. Beautiful scenery today and boiling hot. It's ridiculous. This time of year in October, even though it's really, really windy, I've had a fleece on, way too hot. T-shirt weather, crazy. What else been going on? Well, when I get home from the center now, I've got a whole trailer load of well-rotted horse manure. Great to unload wheelbarrow around the back onto Jackie's vegetable plot for next year. My life's fun. She's uh, tactfully at work. 
<laughs> and what I think about all this social media and the internet, it, it does shrink the world in many ways. And I've just had a, a nice conversation with a guy called John over in Tasmania in Australia, who uses falconry techniques to rehabilitate injured, injured wild local raptors. So, you know, other end of the world, similar kind of thing, similar kind of birds, but also very different birds. So he sent me a few pictures, some of the recent ones he's, he's got in and managed to rehab and get fit, crucially importantly, unsuccessfully released. And this is why falconry techniques are so valuable to rehabbing wild, injured or damaged or starving raptors. Letting them fly around in an aviary until things look like they're fixed and letting them go is often just a death sentence. These birds are apex predators. They have to hunt for a living, most of them. They have to work so hard. A few months in an aviary, they just sit around most of the time. They lose their muscle tone and they are not top of their game. And then they're released. Great, lovely video. Oh, there it goes. We did well. Look, it can fly again. Falconry techniques to get these birds hunting fit is really the only serious way to go when you're rehabbing wild raptors for sure. So the great work they're doing down there is fantastic. And again, I'll caption a couple of photos, but just look at some of these stunning Australian birds of prey.